Hi, I'm Amy Lewis with Solid Fire, and I'm here with Keith. Keith, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Keith Norby. I'm a Senior Business Development Manager for Solid Fire, managing the uh, VMware Alliance. Excellent. Well, that's convenient because we're here at VMworld 2015 in Barcelona, and we're hearing a lot about the Software Defined Data Center. Can you talk to me? Let's dig under the marketing title a little bit and tell me where you think that is, what's missing, where that's going, what does it mean to be a Software Defined Data Center? Well, yeah, and I think the biggest thing that we find uh, missing is network virtualization and storage virtualization. Compute virtualization has been around since the beginning of you know the the whole vSphere platform called ESX originally, and still called ESXi. But in storage, you know, the best they've done is provide you know a VMFS structure, and now VVOL is coming. Uh, but the problem is that the most for most people when they're trying to really serve applications and and define software controls for applications and all the orchestration they're trying to produce for agility in the software defined data center. When Steve Herod first wrote that thing three years ago in a blog coming out of NetWorld Interop, you know, I think the vision that he had was that these are supposed to be software controls on, on, on architecture platforms. And storage never really had before a way to say, I want to control performance separate from capacity. I want to be able to scale without disruption or interruption. I want to be able to have different definable ways to not have to go to tiers or silos to control performance, but instead go towards profiles. And profiles based off of the applications and how you have needs, because that's where network for, uh, function virtualization is going, and that's where storage virtualization needs to go to complete the software-defined data center. Got it, so in some ways we are at a part of a revolution of, of thinking, that you almost have to think differently, approach the problem differently uh, to solve the storage problems that are created in a, a world that is ever more demanding. Is that accurate? Yeah, absolutely, because we've all grown up with certain legacy architectures that were made for the time they were invented. And, you know, we're, we're living in the, in, the, in the next generation of these new architectures. And some are trying to do it with just software only, some are trying to do it with just all flash. Certainly solid fires all flash. Uh, some are trying to do it with hyper-converging the storage up in the server. But at the end of the day, what you really want out of a software-defined, what, what, the, what the software-defined data center wants from software-defined storage is controls. They want capabilities. That's what VVOLS is trying to really be about, is expose your capabilities up into that layer so that you can have benefit to the way application builders want to go about building infrastructure. Because that's certainly what we're learning, isn't it? That the application builder, builders rule the roost. That's what we're hearing a lot about the DevOps culture and, yeah. and they who create applications want what they want when they want it. Yep. And cloud native apps, they spent a lot of time talking about new platforms that are building thousands and tens of thousands of apps to live for minutes or hours and then destroying them. And you know, legacy architecture just is not gonna work in those scenarios or they're gonna, not gonna work very well. Uh, so agility is the name of the game. And, you know, having controls and capabilities in a system, in this case for storage, is really what the software defined data center is going to require. So don't bring an 8 track uh, cassette player to a uh, digital streaming party. Definitely not. Be digital. <laughs> well, one more question since we're in Barcelona, Keith. Um, tapas, good idea or to just a snack? No, tapas definitely are, are, are like a lot of things in life. You know, there's, there's good choice and there's bad choices. So. You know, and it's and it's different for everybody, right? There's no right answer or right size. So, uh, when you're when you're looking for the requirements of your tapas of choice, uh, I would just suggest make sure you know what you're getting into and uh, you know sample before you dive in. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Keith. Thanks. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Pop Up Tech Talks.